Hello everyone, thank you so much for being here. My name is Isabel. I make videos on TikTok and on YouTube about skincare and lifestyle, all things that are beautiful, natural, and effective. I personally believe that we have one life to live, so you might as well live it beautifully in every sense of the word. In today's video, I am gonna be sharing with you five TikTok trends in the beauty space that you should absolutely avoid. These are trends that can be long-term damaging, they can create damage in the short term, they're just not good. I know that trends can be exciting, especially on TikTok, a place where the results are so quick and so in your face, you just think, oh, let me try that, I, let me you know, jump in, it looks so easy. Don't do it, these are absolutely trends to avoid. So number one is to pinch your cheeks to create a natural flushed blush look. I don't understand where this one kind of got lost in translation because this is something that our grandmothers, probably even great grandmothers were doing in the place of makeup. You would just take your fingertips and you would really pinch your cheeks for a long time, a couple of hard seconds, and you'd be left with a natural flush on your cheeks. The reason why this hasn't been done in so many years is because it has been proven to create all sorts of irritation on your face. You can create long-term damage, you can break the capillaries in your face. I would not recommend pinching any part of your body for the purpose of bringing blood to the surface of your skin, let alone right on your face, which is an area that you absolutely wanna protect at all costs and where long-term damage is gonna be the most visible. So I can just say, oh my God, when I see people doing this on TikTok, I'm like, this is a mistake. That's why, for example, when you are doing any kind of facial massage or gua sha, anything like that, it's really recommended to use a really emollient oil on your skin before doing any kind of pulling or massaging at all, because you really do want to be extra careful and extra sensitive with the skin on your face. The second TikTok trend that I want to talk about right now that you should absolutely avoid at all costs is using at-home bleaching products to whiten your teeth. You heard that right. I am not making it up. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, consider yourself one of the lucky ones because a video went viral. I'm gonna show you a little picture of what I'm talking about of a woman with very bright white and beautiful teeth who says that her teeth are so white and so beautiful because she uses a Mr. Clean magic eraser to whiten them. I was horrified to see this video and even more horrified to see how many times it was shared and watched and the comments of so many young people saying that they are running to the store to try this trick themselves. I can say right now, don't do it. This is a terrible idea. So the first thing I did is to research what dentists were saying about it because I'm not a dentist, I'm not a tooth expert in any way. But basically the consensus is that the reason why her teeth were so white looking is not because the bleach itself was just bleaching the outside of her teeth, which you know would kind of be amazing. It also is not really mouth safe bleach, but whatever, that's not the thing that's really creating this bright and white smile. The thing is that you are abrading, you are physically scrubbing off the entire outer layer of your teeth, the enamel of your teeth, which is so important for your teeth health long term if you scrub this off when it's gone it is gone and you are going to have tooth troubles and you're going to have to have various mouth surgeries seriously there are so many long-term really terrible consequences of scrubbing off the enamel on your teeth now i will say that when you scrub off the enamel on your teeth which does tend to get stained with coffee or wine whatever you're eating and drinking over time especially smoking, don't smoke, terrible for all sorts of appearance things, but that can also really brown your teeth. You scrub off the enamel and you're left with a bright white smile underneath. I get it, that's very endearing and it's exciting and her, her smile is so beautiful and white, but it is not worth it. And even more important is that there are chemicals in these magic eraser sponges that are really, really unsafe. It's more than just that you're abrading your teeth, which you absolutely are, but you're also physically putting formaldehyde into your mouth. Now, most of these products do contain formaldehyde which you've probably heard of it, it can cause cancer, it can have huge, huge health impact long term, and it's really something that you do not want to be ingesting ever. And also, the reason why these sponges work so well to kind of scrub off, you know, your bathtub or your toilet, wherever you're using them, is because they have an ingredient called melamine, I think I'm pronouncing that right, in them, which when it's mixed with water, becomes hard as rocks. And that's what really creates that white look. It's scrubbing off the dirt. It's not really bleaching it as people would hope. 
So if you see this video or if you hear about it on the grapevine, you know, this is a really fast, easy, cheap way to whiten your teeth. I know that teeth whitening can be a little bit expensive, but trust me, you don't want to be messing with your teeth long term. If you have to have teeth surgery or do any kind of dental work like that, it is going to cost so much more than just getting, you know, a professional teeth whitening done at your dentist or trying at home whitening. It's just definitely preferred, definitely recommended. I would absolutely avoid this trend 100%. The third TikTok trend to avoid is to use hairspray as makeup setting spray. Now I know that TikTok is used primarily by younger people, maybe early teens, mid teens, and everyone is looking for beauty on a budget, especially when you're that age, you don't have a tremendous amount of money to spend on your makeup. And the idea of paying 30 or so dollars for a makeup setting spray is just too much, especially for something that's not really, you know, creating any big effect like a foundation or a blush. It's a setting spray. Why would you want to spend so much money on it? So some people have discovered that rightly so if you spray hairspray onto your face and I wish I were making this up, but I'm not, it will set your makeup. It will lock your makeup in place. Does it work to do that? Probably. Yes. Have I tried it? No, there is no amount of money that you could pay me to spray hairspray onto my face ever. There just no way. Don't do it. And I'm about to tell you why. The first reason is the way that hairspray works is it, it creates a film on top of your hair and it locks down your hair, which is okay. I actually don't even recommend it for hair. I'm on a big hair journey myself to try and grow out my hair, which is why it's brown right now. Anyway, off topic, back to the topic. It creates a film on top of your hair. It creates that same film on top of your skin and that's what locks your makeup in. However, that is not going to allow your skin to breathe and it's not going to allow your skin to absorb water and oil and to excrete or let out water and oil throughout the day, which is absolutely vital to skin health in so many ways. Your skin is an organ and you are physically covering it in something that really is not meant to be there. Imagine like a waxy, plasticky film on top of your skin all day, not to mention you've got a layer of makeup in between. I really think that that just sounds absolutely terrible. And the second thing is that a lot of these hairsprays, almost all of them, I would say, especially if you are on a budget and the reason why you'd be trying this trend in the first place is because you're on a budget. You're probably going to your, your Walgreens, your CVS, and you're buying a cheaper hairspray. And these aerosol hairsprays, not to mention the aerosols are bad for you. You don't want to be breathing them in, but they contain alcohol. And that's just terrible for your skin. Again, not great for your hair. I wouldn't recommend it, but on your actual face, I would never recommend spraying an alcohol-based product, which is also why I'm very against um, alcohol-based toners. I'm going to be making a video about beauty products to avoid. One of them is very much an alcohol-based toner. No need for it. Um, it. It really is not going to do anything for your skin unless you have some kind of a really terrible acne problem. I'm going to go into all the details in that video, but definitely you do not want to be spraying hairspray onto your face. The alcohol, the film, the aerosol, so many reasons why this is a trend to avoid. Now I've saved the next two trends for last because they are the most widely accepted. They are trends that my peers, my friends are trying and doing. The first three are very extreme. They might seem obvious, you know, I don't want to do those. That's obvious. These next two are so widespread that it's worrying for that reason. So the fourth TikTok trend to absolutely avoid is sunscreen contouring. So if you've seen the videos, it became very popular, especially over last summer, but I can really see that this is going to continue into the winter and into next summer as well, because no one really was calling it out as a bad thing to do. It was kind of considered this really cool hack, a way to have a contoured looking face all day without makeup, without having to get surgery. And the technique is basically to apply a thick mineral sunscreen, or I guess any kind of sunscreen, but usually people were applying mineral because you can really see where you're laying it down onto the high points of your face. So you'd apply a really thick sunscreen onto your cheekbones, maybe down the bridge of your nose, your cupid's bow, along your eyebrows, wherever you would naturally highlight or wherever you'd want to kind of bring attention to, to create that chiseled face that everyone's looking for, that Bella Hadid face. That's great. I'm all for trying to create that face naturally, especially without having to go through surgery, which has complications and is expensive, but doing it with sunscreen is not the right idea for so many reasons. The first one being 
that it's encouraging that you lay out in the sun and that you lay out in the sun with certain areas of your face completely unprotected by sunscreen at all. Now I get that maybe when you wash your face afterwards, you do have this kind of glow, but you can achieve that with fake tanner, just do it the opposite way. Take your usual fake tanner and put it on the low parts of your face, go to sleep, wash it off in the morning, and you can have the same effect without creating terrible long-term sun damage. I don't ever lay out in the sun. I really avoid laying my body out in the sun. I do sometimes. Um, it's not good for you for a lot of reasons, and it can obviously cause cancer, aging, of course, but my face especially. I wear a hat when I'm outside. I have physical sunscreen on. Sometimes I layer my sunscreens, sunglasses. It is so important long term to protect the skin on your face. If you are going to be tanning your face skin in any way, you are really going to regret it. It's just not worth it. Think about it. You're only tan for a week, two weeks, maybe three if you've got magical skin but three weeks on a really good person of being tanned as compared to a lifetime of wrinkles and aging, sun damage and cancer, it's so not worth it. I thank God came to this realization when I was maybe 16 or 17, I was tanning a lot. This was kind of halfway through high school for me. And I just realized like, oh my God, like this is not worth it. I'm not even a naturally tan person. I'm quite pale. I do fake tan all the time. I have a darker foundation fade, uh, shade than what I probably should, but I really got into tanning and I just realized one day like this is not worth it. Like you really do not want to be putting the sun on your face, especially. You're gonna regret it in the long term. I can absolutely guarantee you that. And in the long term, again, doing kind of preventative things is so much more cost effective than having to get laser treatments or you know facelift whatever you have to do because the skin on your face is just worn out from the sun so really avoid this trend the fifth and final tiktok trend that i would avoid at all costs is the filler trend or in general the cosmetic surgery on the face trend now I could do a whole other video about BBLs and body surgeries that are getting really popular. I, for one, actually, I guess, fell victim to social media and I got a surgery myself that I regretted. I really can do a whole video about that, but what I want to talk about right now is specifically the face. Everyone, it seems like, on TikTok, every influencer, every celebrity is putting filler in their face. They're getting threads to lift their eyes. They're doing all sorts of cosmetic procedures that are one, in my opinion, completely unnecessary. They really are such a waste of money, but also they're gonna create really long-term problematic effects. And so I wanna start out with number one. The first thing is that this is actually a trend. In general, people I think are short-sighted when it comes to trends. When something is in style, you assume it's always been that way. You can't really remember what it was like before and you assume it's gonna go on forever because you think that that's beautiful right now and you assume that that beauty will be the standard forever. But think about the 80s, I think is a great example. Back then, people had bold lip, bright blue eyeshadow all over their face and this kind of blush that was in a V starting down like way below their cheekbones. In my opinion, it's an incredibly aging look. It makes you look old, but really it makes you look like you were in your 20s in the 80s. When you see people who have this makeup on these days, you look at them and you're like, wow, why would you put that old makeup on? But it's not old makeup to them. That's trendy makeup to them. And you can think about face filler in the exact same way. In the future, young people are gonna look at these filled faces and be like, whoa, why did you do that? Like, that's not trendy, that's not beautiful, it's not anything at all. And it's gonna age you and it's gonna date you because at that point, your face is gonna be instantly recognizable as a face that was filled right now. In the long run, if you wanna be kind of ageless and graceful and effortless and beautiful, really just kind of naturally beautiful, you really don't want to be filling your face in a way that's popular right now and makeup can be washed off, you can always put on new makeup. These fillers are here to stay, and that is my second point. Now, when it comes to fillers, they will dissolve in your face. People say, oh, you know, they're not permanent, no big deal. They do dissolve, but they don't dissolve evenly. If they did dissolve perfectly evenly, I would say, you know what, no big deal. Unless you're filling to the point that you're stretching your skin, which almost no one is, no big deal, go ahead and do it. The problem is that they dissolve in an uneven way, and they can actually create ripples underneath your skin, which is so unattractive. At that point, when you start to notice those ripples or that kind of inconsistency, maybe one part dissolved really quickly and the other part is kind of a little bubble there, you're gonna go in, you're gonna be like, you need to even this out. 
what the doctor is going to do at that point is there's no way to really get right into those ripples or those areas that have dissolved faster. The only thing that that doctor is going to be able to do is put enough filler on top to create a smoothed look. Now again, it's going to dissolve. It's going to dissolve unevenly. You're going to go and go and go and you're going to get that face bloat that you see in older celebrities. I really would never recommend getting filler in your face. I am so thankful, honestly, looking back that I didn't do the whole lip filler thing when it started getting popular five or six years ago on YouTube. I was so tempted and thank goodness I didn't even have the money to spend on it at the time. I, otherwise, I might have done it. I am so thankful that I didn't. And that goes for all sorts of fillers. I just, I don't recommend it. And I do know that you can get them dissolved, but one, you can't perfectly dissolve them. Like I said, the doctor is never gonna be able to get in there and really fully dissolve everything. The second thing is that it's not without its own expense and its own discomfort to be dissolving fillers. I just, I really wouldn't recommend it. Don't forget to think long-term with all of these trends, anything that is permanent or that could be permanent or create permanent you know, damage like tanning, don't forget to think, you know, in the long run, is this worth it? When I'm 50, is it going to be worth it that I got fillers when I was in my 20s? And I'm telling you the answer is no. So that's just my opinion. I know people are going to be so upset probably when they hear that. And I made a TikTok video about that. And I just said fillers are not the move. And yeah, that's just my opinion. I hope that you liked this video. If you have any TikTok trends that you've seen that are just wild, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to look into them. I love to kind of see where people are going and where the trends are going, but I appreciate you for making it this far. Please thumbs up this video and subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.